Hi, and welcome to the tutorial video for this week's pre-lab for Stats250. Today we're going to be talking about paired data and how to perform a paired t-test in R and R Commander. So the first thing that we need to do is, once you've got the R console open, load R Commander by, per usual, typing library and open parenthesis, R, CMDR, where that first R is capitalized, close that parenthesis and hit enter. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is load some data. So this week for the tutorial video, we're going to be using a data set that's on Canvas called stats250data.rdata. And this contains 50 observations of uh, students, past students, exam scores, um, and some homework scores from Stats250. Don't worry, it's totally de-identified, de um, so you won't be able to know whose score is whose, but it is real data. So to load this, we're going to come up to Data. Load data set. And in the Prelab 8 folder, I've downloaded this data set from Canvas already, so I'm just going to double click this to open it. And now you can see that the data set is now active in our commander, Stats250 data, and we can click View Data Set to take a look at it. So here you can see that there are five variables in this data set there's a student ID number, there's an exam one score, an exam two score, an average homework score out of 30 points and a score on the final exam. We're interested for this pre-lab in determining uh, if there is a significant difference between exam one and exam two scores on average. Um, so we're looking at particularly the exam one minus exam two score. Now this is a perfect candidate for a paired t-test because this is clearly paired data. We have two exam scores for each individual, and we believe that each individual's exam scores are more related to each other than they are to the exam scores of a different individual, right? We're observing multiple observations on the same person, and so we have reason to believe that we should pair those observations because it's the same person observed twice. So a way that we can look at the differences between exam one and exam two is by creating a new variable that represents that difference of exam one minus exam two. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just close this here. And now to create this new variable, we're gonna come up to data, manage variables in active data set, and then compute new variable. The way this is gonna work is we're gonna provide R with a variable name for this new variable that we're constructing. Um, but this is kind of picky. So here, we there are two things that we really need to keep in mind. The first is that there cannot be any spaces in this variable name, and the second is that the first character in the variable name has to be a letter. So I'm going to call this exam diff. This is a perfectly legal name for R. It starts with a letter, no spaces. And this is so now I'm going to come over to the expression to compute, and I'm going to tell R that I want to compute exam one. I'm going to type a minus sign exam two. So I'm getting exam one and exam two to come down here just by double clicking. So this variable is going to be the exam one score minus the exam two score, and it'll be stored in a variable called exam diff. So let's click OK, and let's see if it worked. So we can view the data set. Over here, you can see our exam diff variable has been added at the end of the uh, data set, so it's the rightmost variable. And just as a sanity check, let's make sure that it is what we think it is. So for this first observation, exam one minus exam two is 57 minus 60 points, which should be negative three, which is the case here. So it seems like our variable construction worked and did the thing that we want it to do. So let's go ahead and close this. And now we can get some numerical summaries on this exam diff variable. So we can come up to statistics, summaries, numerical summaries. And we're going to choose our exam diff variable to create a numerical summary. But before we click OK, we just want to come over to the statistics tab, click this, and we want to check the standard error of mean box, which, if you recall, is the standard deviation of the data divided by the square root of n, the sample size. So we'll click OK. And down in our output window, now we can see that the mean exam difference in exam one minus exam two scores is negative 3.24 points. So that means on average, people scored about 3.24 points lower on exam two than they did on exam one. And the standard error of that difference 
is about 1.38 points. Again, we've got our usual five number summary and n the sample size here. Now, before we perform a paired t-test, we should be checking assumptions. We should be checking the assumption that these differences are uh, from a random sample of differences and that the differences come from a normally distributed population of differences or that a normal distribution is an appropriate model for the population of differences. One way to do that would be to construct a QQ plot or to look at a histogram. The QQ plot is probably going to be more reliable to check that normality assumption, um, but there's no harm in looking at both. And to check that assumption or to, to remind yourself about how to construct a QQ plot, you can check out previous videos on this channel. So let's assume that this assumption is satisfied and let's start conducting this paired t-test. There are two ways to do this. One, we can perform a, a true paired t-test in our commander itself, or we can just do a single sample t-test on the, that exam diff variable that we created earlier. It turns out those two things are exactly the same. Let's start by construct or by doing a paired t-test in our commander. So to do this, we can come up to statistics, means, paired t-test. And the way this is going to work is we're going to select the two variables that we want to look at the differences of. So we're going to have the first variable minus the second variable here. So we're interested in the difference between exam one and exam two, but specifically exam one minus exam two. If we come over to the options tab, we can select our alternative hypothesis as well as a confidence level. Let's change that confidence level to 90%. This won't change the results of the hypothesis test, but it will change the confidence interval that the hypothesis test procedure reports back to us. Now, because we are interested in just seeing if there is any difference at all on average between exam one and exam two, um, we're just gonna do a two-sided alternative hypothesis here. So we can click okay. And down here in our output window, we get the results of this paired t-test. So we can see that the mean of the differences is negative 3.24 points, which lines up with our numerical summary data. The t-test statistic is negative 2.3535. With 49 degrees of freedom, there is a p-value of 0 0.02265. And now down here, you can see that we have a 90% confidence interval for the true population mean difference. Now suppose that we were interested in a one-sided alternative hypothesis. So notice here that the mean of the differences is negative, right? Maybe we want to test the hypothesis that exam two scores are worse than exam one scores. So to do that, we can just come back up to statistics, means, paired t-test, make sure exam one and exam two are still selected here, but in the options tab, we're going to choose difference less than zero. So this will test the null hypothesis that the true difference mu sub d is equal to zero versus the alternative that mu sub d is less than zero. So let's click OK. Notice that we still have the same t statistic as before, same degrees of freedom, same sample estimate, but this time the p-value is half of our original p-value, of our two-sided p-value. This is because here we're doing a one-sided test, so we cut that p-value in half. And now also notice that the 90% confidence interval has a lower bound of negative infinity and an upper bound of negative 1.45. The reason that the lower bound here is negative infinity is because when you tell R that you're doing a one-sided uh, test, then R is going to put all of its eggs in one basket, essentially. It's going to put all of the uncertainty on one side of that confidence interval here on the upper side of the confidence interval. So it's not, so um, as we say, splitting alpha. It's not splitting the, the confidence level into two sides. It's putting all of that uncertainty on one side of the interval because we really only care about uh, whether that upper bound of the interval is above or below zero. That's the only thing that matters here. If you want a standard two-sided confidence interval, then you would choose a two-sided alternative hypothesis in that test window that we saw before. So that's one way to do a paired t-test. The other way, is, as I mentioned, is to just conduct a single sample t-test on that difference variable that we created earlier. So we've seen how to do this before. We're just gonna come up to statistics, 
means single sample t-test. The single variable that we're going to ch choose is exam diff. And let's just choose a two-sided alternative hypothesis with a confidence level of 90% and click OK. Now notice here we still have the same t-value, the same p-value as before, the same sample mean, and the, those two confidence intervals are identical as well. So these two procedures are doing the exact same thing. It's just that one is explicitly using the differences that you computed, uh, that's the one sample t-test, versus the paired t-test procedure is computing the differences automatically for you. So let's come up to the R Markdown script here, um, and we'll scroll all the way to the top, and we can add a title here. So this is Prelab 8, Paired Data. Notice that I'm not putting a, putting a colon in the title. We're adding a name here. So this is 250 Instructional Team. And now, I really we really only did this one-sided paired t-test for demonstration purposes. So we can go ahead and delete the chunk of code that corresponds to that so it doesn't show up in our, our output here. Um, so let's go ahead and delete this chunk of code here. Also, I'm noticing a little bit of a typo as I'm scrolling through here. This chunk of code should have a set of back ticks here. Anytime you see uh, three back ticks and then R in curly braces, what follows is some R code that needs to end in back ticks. So that's going to result in some failed. Uh, report generation. So make sure that you're seeing back ticks, R in curly braces, some code, more back ticks here. These are called back ticks, and then some blank lines. So that's just some quick troubleshooting for our markdown document. Now at the bottom, we can add a blank line between the last set of back ticks and some text. Okay, so we've got some text. We have our results here. Let's go ahead and save our, our markdown file. So we'll come up to file, save our markdown file as. I'm just going to save this as Prelab 8. Click Save and Generate Report. And now in a new browser tab, um, you can see that we have all of our code, the numerical summaries that we generated, the results of our uh, t-tests, as well as our text that we've written here. If you come into a file explorer or, or finder on a Mac, You'll notice that there's a prelab8.html file wherever you've stored that or saved that prelab8.rmd file. This is what you're going to upload to Canvas. Don't save anything from your browser and try to upload that. It might not always work. So upload this prelab8.html file to Canvas um, as your submission for this week. And uh, make sure that you're following the assignment on Canvas, not this tutorial video, because this is not the assignment uh, itself. Just, a, just an example. Um, let us know if you have any questions, and we're looking forward to seeing you in lab this week.